Um, so welcome to this uh, last video in the series of interfacing uh, devices to the Pigman 16F84 microcontroller. And in this video I'm going to look in depth at how we can connect a serial analog to digital converter to the pic 16 f 84 uh, microcontroller. So the analog to digital converter that I'm going to look at is the Texas Instruments TLC548. It's a very simple, straightforward and inexpensive device. What it does is it takes an analog signal on its analog input pin and it convert, converts it into binary ones and zeros. It converts it into an 8-bit binary number, a number between 0 and 255. A couple of things to be aware of about this device. First of all, it's a CMOS device. That means generally it's going to be powered up to 5 volts, but it can operate anywhere between 3 volts and 6 volts. It's got 8-bit resolution. That means that any... Uh, voltage will convert it into an 8-bit number and that means that uh, the voltage will be represented as a number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 up as far as 255. So 8-bit resolution means that the voltage will be represented by an 8-bit number or a number between 0 and 255 if you want to look at it in decimal. It takes 17 microseconds for the analog to digital converter to convert the analog voltage on this input into a digital 8-bit number. And that means it can take about 40,000 samples every second. Now that's very fast for most simple applications. There are much faster analog to digital converters we can get, but 40,000 samples per second, I think you'll agree, is a pretty impressive number of samples it can take. So it can take 40,000 different readings and send them to the big microcontroller. Now, whether we'd ever want to do that with just a simple uh, serial uh, 8-bit ADC? Probably not. I've shown a pinout of the device down here. Now, unfortunately, it's on its side. But basically, you can see it's an 8-pin device. Pins 1, 2, 3, 4 are on one side. And pins 5, 6, 7, 8 are on the other side. You can see the pin 8 is VCC or plus 5 volts. And pin 4 is ground. And the other pins are used for different purposes. Now, this table over here shows the pin number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You can see pin 1 is the reference input, and that's going to be a voltage between 0 volts and 5 volts. And we'll generally try to make it some sort of simple voltage like 5 volts or maybe 2.5 volts. Pin 2 is the analog input pin, that's where the analog signal comes in on, and that's going to be converted into the digital signal by the analog to digital converter. Pin 3 is a negative reference voltage, it's nearly always connected to ground, so pin 3, if you like, is going to be wired to ground. Pin 4 is ground, so pins 3 and 4 are going to be wired together. So pin 3 will be ground, pin 4 will be ground. Uh, pin 1 is a reference voltage, it could be 5 volts, it could be 2.5 volts. And pin 2 here is the input voltage coming into the analog to digital converter. So that's the first four pins. Let's look at the next pins. Well, pins 5, 6 and 7 are used by the PIC microcontroller to control the device. Pin 5 is chip select, and that turns the device on or off. Now you can see that the chip select has a bar above it. You can see it here, it's chip select, and there's the bar above it. That means the chip select is active low. If I wire chip select low, it means, or if I pull chip select low, it means that the ADC is turned on. If chip select is high, the ADC is turned off. So this allows me to turn on and off the analog to digital converter. So I normally have the analog to digital converter off, but when I bring chip select low, it'll turn the analog to digital converter on, and I can take in the reading. Um, pin 6 is the data output pin. The data comes out one bit at a time on pin 6 and is sent to the big microcontroller. So that's the pin that sends the 8 bits to the analog to digital converter. Pin 7 is called the input output clock pin. Here it is here. And it is used to time when the bits are coming out on pin 6. So the input output clock is a signal generated by the PIC microcontroller to, tend the, to tell the analog to digital converter to send me one bit. So every time the input output clock pulses, a bit is sent out from the analog to digital converter. At pin 8, the last pin is 5 volts or VCC. So that's the power pin. So pin 8 is power. Pin 4 is ground. Pin 3 is also ground. Pin 1 is a reference voltage, maybe 5 volts or 2.5 volts. Pin 2 is the analog input pin. That's where the analog input voltage is coming in. And then I've got these three pins. Chip select data out and input output clock, which I have to wire to the big microcontroller to get this TLC548 to work. 
I've tried to sketch how the device operates at the bottom of this slide here. If I put zero volts in on pin two on the analog input pin, inside in the analog to digital converter, I represent that zero volts as eight zeros. And if I was to send the data to the PicMic controller, the data will be sent out one bit at a time, and it will be sent out in the following order, zero, 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 zero. You can see that the least significant bit is sent first, and the most significant bit is sent last. So zero volts is represented by eight zeros in this simple case. What if I had two and a half volts? Well, if I had two and a half volts, that would be represented by one, zero, 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 zero. And that would be represented by as follows, one, zero, 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 coming out here on the data output. And again, we can see that this one is the most significant bit just here, and the least significant bit is here. So 2.5 volts would be represented by one and seven zeros. And one and seven zeros will be sent to the big microcontroller. Finally, let's take a third uh, example. Let's suppose I have five volts on the analog input pin. That would be represented by eight logic ones. And I would send one, 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 one to the big microcontroller. So the data coming out would be eight ones. So if I've got zero volts, I get eight zeros. Two and a half volts, I get one, zero, 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 and then zero, 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 zero. And if I've got five volts, I get one, 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 one. Now I can't show all 256 possible examples that there are. I've just shown for zero volts, two and a half volts, and five volts. But for any other voltage, you would get different combinations of ones and zeros coming on the data output line. So what's happening is a voltage is going into the analog to digital converter, and an 8-bit data value or code is sent to the PIC microcontroller. And we need to program our PIC microcontroller to pick up those 8 bits and to store them inside in the PIC microcontroller. Uh, let's look at the next page now. Here's a timing diagram for the TLC 548. And we use this timing diagram, which is shown on the top half of the page, to program the PIC microcontroller. Now, we have three important pins on the ADC. We've got pin 7, pin 5, and pin 6. Pin 7 is the input-output clock, pin 5 is chip select, and then pin 6 is the 8-bit data coming out. To get this 8-bit data to come out on the PIC microcontroller, or to be sent to the PIC microcontroller, what we need to do is we need to bring the chip select line low and then send 8 clock pulses on the input-output clock pin. So here's pulse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Each time the input-output clock uh, pin is pulsed low or goes high and low like a clock pulse. What's happening is we're getting bit 7, bit 6, bit 5, bit 4, bit 3, bit 2, bit 1, and bit 0 to be sent to the PIC microcontroller. So the PIC microcontroller brings chip select low, it generates the input output clock signal, and then I get 8 bits sent to the PIC microcontroller. I can then turn off the analog to digital character by bringing the chip select pin high. And then at some other point in time, I'll bring chip select low again, send eight clock pulses to the input output clock pin, and I get a different eight bits being read in by the PIC microcontroller. So again, there's another set of data, eight bits being sent from the analog digital converter to the PIC microcontroller. So pins five, six, and seven are used to control the analog to digital converter, and they have to be wired to the PIC microcontroller to get the data to come into the PIC microcontroller. So what's happening is, data is being sent one bit at a time, as shown here, to the PIC microcontroller, and has to be read in one bit at a time and stored in the PIC microcontroller and then reassembled into an 8-bit value. So that's how you control the serial ADC. Let's briefly look back up at the previous page for a second. So you can see here that these three pins, 5, 6, and 7, are crucial. All the other pins are fairly straightforward. They're either wired to ground, or to plus 5 volts, or to some reference voltage, or to the analog input pins. But these three pins, 5, 6, and 7, shown here, 5, 6, and 7, chip select data out and input output clock, they're the pins that are used by the PIC microcontroller to control that analog to digital converter. So that's why pin 7, 5, and 6, that's why we have the timing diagram. 
And that's the timing diagram taken from the data sheet for the TLC548. And you have to set up your PIC microcontroller to generate that time, that these timing diagrams. And if you don't, uh, it won't work. Now we're going to look at a simulation in Proteus, and we'll see these timing diagrams in Proteus. And we'll also see them in the lab if we can actually interface uh, the ADC, if we get a chance to interface the ADC to the PIC microcontroller, we'll actually see them on an oscilloscope. Okay, thanks for listening, folks. That's the end of this uh, short video.